Hello and welcome to day seven of pod- podcast. It's not even a thing. Welcome to day seven of Podmas, guys. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about something that um, I feel a little bit uncomfortable about talking about, but hey ho, we're going to work with it. Um, if you're one of my newsletter subscribers, you will have received an email on Sunday because I send emails out every other Sunday, just basically with musings. Um, sometimes I then go you know, share that with my, with the world, <laughs> with the 10 people that read my blog. Jokes. Um, but often it's just for my newsletter. Um, so if you want to subscribe, then there's, there'll be a link in the show notes. Just a little bit of shameless self-promo here. Um, but yes, I, I shared it with my newsletter first. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, um, you may have noticed on Instagram stories that I've been sharing a lot about my transition back to being vegan and I've had a few questions about why uh, and how and just you know people interested to know Um, and I want to say first away first away oh my god I can't speak at all today I didn't have a very good night's sleep so I (laughs) apologize I'm not even going to edit this so we're just going to go with all of this nonsense Um, so I want to say first up I am totally open to people asking me questions about being vegan Um, I am so happy to answer anything that help you if you want to become vegan or I give you any of my tips. Um, I will answer your questions about why I decided to go vegan. However, the newsletter that I sent out was a bit of a tongue in cheek. Um, <laughs> I suppose F you <laughs> to the people that are a bit judgy about my decision. Now, I'll probably put it out there and say it tends to be not people necessarily in the blogosphere. It's normally kind of old friends, family, that sort of thing. And I don't think it comes from a bad place at all. I think it comes from a place of insecurity and and people feel, not insecurity, no, I think people feel threatened when you make a decision that makes them feel bad, even though I'm, I'm not trying to make anyone else feel bad. I've just chosen not to eat animal products myself. Um, but I understand, and and especially, you know, friends and family who might be going out to dinner with me, I suppose they're thinking, oh God, does that mean we have to eat, we all, we all have to be vegan every time we see you, and no, obviously not. But I just wanted to record this as a pod, Podmus episode, because I thought it'd be a bit interesting, and I, and I have had a bit of a reaction to the newsletter, like a, a good one, that people just found it funny or were interested in it and I've got friends who are also trying to transition to being vegan and um, I guess I just wanted to share <laughs> I guess that's my thing share <laughs> sharing's caring and all that okay so why did I become vegan so I used to be vegetarian I was vegetarian for many years and then I was vegan for about 18 months and then I fell pregnant I am um, fun fact for you my wedding was um, by the sea and it was in this awesome fish restaurant, fish and chip restaurant. Well, it used to be a fish and chip restaurant. Now it's a wedding venue. Um, it was in a place called Whitstable, which is very famous for its oysters. And we had fish and chips and oysters and all the rest of it. And I had vegan gnocchi. <laughs> I think I, was, I think there was only two of us at the wedding who had who didn't have fish and chips. And the bride was one of them. So I didn't even eat my own wedding meal. And everyone was like, oh my god, the fish and chips were amazing. And I was like, well, I didn't eat them. Anyway, um, when I fell pregnant, um, I, and a little bit before actually, no, it was actually when I fell pregnant, I just didn't realise I was pregnant. I felt so sick in those first few weeks, I suddenly started craving meat, anything. And that's not because I needed meat to survive, I think it was just the changes in my body and just feeling a bit nauseous and whatever, anyway... And, I, and also, I should say that I was working in an office at this point. I was a staff writer for the Express. So I was commuting, like a fairly long commute, and I was working crazy hours, like getting up at half five in the morning and coming home. At, I, did, I did shift. Um, that's what staff writing's like. So I would either do like a seven till, I think it was seven till three or three till 11 p.m. Um, and weekend shifts as well. So I was kind of working crazy hours and I'm not really made for office work, so I found it quite quite tough. And so I was surviving on quite a terrible diet also. Anyway, I basically went full carnivore. <laughs> and I just, the whole way through my pregnancy, I think I didn't want to have to think about 
another thing apart from keeping my baby alive. And I just ate whatever I wanted. And when I say I ate whatever I wanted, I really was eating for about 10 people. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> um, so recently, so Anais is seven months old and we're sleeping better. She's sleeping better. So therefore me and Ollie, my husband, are sleeping better. Um, apart from this week where she's been teething. <laughs> um, and I decided, yeah, I want to go back to being vegan probably about six weeks ago. And I did, and that's it. And so I've been vegan again for for almost two months. And my husband is now vegan. He has been vegan for, I think, two weeks. And obviously we're now thinking about, you know, I'm weaning an ice, and so she's starting to eat solid food. She only eats, excuse me, a massive yawn then. She only eats fruit and vegetables anyway. I gave her some, some of my food the other night, some lentils and stuff. But we're thinking about maybe we'll bring her up vegan. We're not really sure yet. We think we will, but, you know, who knows? It's just another decision I don't want to have to make just now. Now, the reasons that I decided to become vegan um, are the following. So I feel healthier, um, genuinely. I think you've got to go with your gut, right? So I never really weigh myself. I'm just using this as an analogy. I never really necessarily weigh myself. But I go by how my clothes feel. And when it comes to how healthy I feel, I've just gone with, yeah, like, I feel healthier. And I'm, I'm not doing this for weight loss, obviously. And I, I feel sort of lighter and healthier. And yeah, I just feel better. My skin's better. Um, and before you ask me, I get every single vitamin I need, except for B12 for my plant-based diet. Um, and you can get vitamin B12 from Marmite. You can get it from fortified cereals um you can get it from uh brewer's yeast the yeast flakes that you can use um as like a kind of cheesy substitute but but unless you're eating a real a hell of a lot of marmite you won't get it in enough i don't think but you can you can get back to me i'm not a doctor so or a nutritionist so (laughs) i'll leave that to you to uh decipher um i also I don't believe there's such a thing as humane meat. Uh, this is this is a difficult one, and I know that I'll be criticised for this, but whatever. I don't. There's no for me. Um, an animal being slaughtered, it's never it's never humane. An animal having a short life, which always ends in death, is not. There's nothing humane about that. Um, animals are sentient beings. They feel pain. They feel emotion. So there's. I don't love any food so much that that I that I think I can eat it thinking that's okay that animal died for me to eat this whatever it is um even cheese and I really loved cheese <laughs> bigger a bigger reason probably for my husband is um animal agriculture which is the number one cause and contributor to climate change um it's the number one reason for the degradation of the rainforest which could completely disappear in the next seven eight nine ten years um it's also responsible responsibility responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than all worldwide transportation emissions combined that's crazy right (laughs) i think that's crazy um i mean and that's even before you start talking about the difference between methane and co2 emissions because methane as many people know um like cow farts basically are far more harmful to the environment than CO2 and we can affect it. We can affect climate change really quickly by reducing our meat consumption. I also believe that eating meat is, well, this is a fact, eating meat is not sustainable. So much of our world is um, starving, right? So we know, we know that in the West we completely gorge on meat. And I'm not just talking about the UK, obviously I'm talking about America who consume meat in vast quantities, but basically the Western world. And it's not sustainable. We we don't, animal agriculture already takes up like crazy amounts of the world. (laughs) Um, It takes up space, it um, guzzles water, um, which we're running out of. Um, And if you don't believe me, then just Google it. Every single pound of beef requires 2,500 gallons of water. So every time you walk past a McDonald's or a Byron, just think about the gallons of water that that one restaurant is consuming and then think, 
oh, so if we run out of water <laughs> in 10 years' time, was it worth it? Was it worth it for that burger? That yeah, I don't know. I, I know. I hope this doesn't sound super judgmental, but um, and I don't judge you for your decisions. Um, genuinely, genuinely, I don't. Um, I guess what I do judge is when people judge my eating choices and my diet choices and um, judge the reasons why I've chosen to be vegan. Um, and, you know, I'm not perfect. I am 100% not perfect. Um, I make mistakes and sometimes I accidentally eat a, a meat, a, an animal product. I had honey the other day and I completely, I forgot, like, well, actually eating honey isn't vegan because bees don't produce honey naturally for for humans they produce it for themselves so you know vegans don't eat honey and not all of the makeup and um in my disgusting (laughs) my disgusting amount of makeup in my cupboard not every single piece is cruelty free um at the moment and yeah there are things that I don't do right um but being if you look at the definition of being a vegan it's not about being perfect I'm trying really hard every day to eat as vegan as I possibly can and make as many vegan choices as I possibly can. And I would rather do that and make a couple of mistakes every day than give up and have a carnivorous lifestyle again. Um, That's my decision and I don't judge you for yours. But if you do want to learn more about what it's like to be a vegan, if you want to try it out, then I would really recommend that you head over to Veganuary, um, V-E-G-A-N, U A R Y, which is veganuary.com, which is um has been, it's a not for profit set up to every January. Initially, it was set up that every January you sign up and it's a pledge and you try and go vegan for four weeks. But actually, you can sign up tomorrow and just do four weeks from now if you wanted to. And they send you really helpful resources, they'll send you tips and tricks and recipes every single day and give you information on films that you could watch or books that you could read. Um, and really, really super useful resources like how to read labels, because actually that's really hard is like how to read a label and find out if it's vegan or not. I found that hard and I um, I credit Veganuary with helping my whole family stick at being vegan. Um, I would also recommend that you watch, a f- there's a few documentaries on Netflix that are really good. There's one called Vegucated, there's one called Cowspiracy and one called What the Health. Um, they're all fantastic documentaries. Um, and also please feel free to tweet me slide into my dms i'm at wanderloose blog on twitter on facebook on instagram um and you can email me lucy at wanderloose.com um you can head over to my website wanderloose.com and yes i'm always happy to answer your question i think that's it for today um keep sending in your um amazing suggestions for topic ideas i love hearing them until then i'll see you tomorrow